During our 2024 Community Impact Series, we're engaging leaders across the community that are doing the work on the ground. Today, we have with us a dynamic leader, none other than SGA president and also brand new White House HBCU scholar, Zakari Prince, here to tell us about his agenda for NSU this year and what the youth want to see from their elected officials. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Cleville. I'll be right back in just a moment. Welcome back. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Cleville. We want to thank you for joining us, as you always do on this phenomenal Sunday that we have here in Hampton Roads and wherever you are listening across the country and the world, because without you, we couldn't do what we do. As always, we'd like to thank you, the Spartan Nation, the greatest supporters, the greatest alumni, and yes, the greatest institution in the world. As we broadcast every Sunday from the campus of the Norfolk State University, home of the Spartan Nation, from none other than WNSB Hot 91, the soul of VA. Well, listen, for those of you that engages and listen with us every week, you know that during this month of August and also next month, September, We are engaging our community leaders, our community leaders that are on the ground doing the work. Now, we know with State of Water, you know our our motto. We bring movers, shakers, and policymakers to you to discuss issues important to the community. But before we discuss those issues, we got to talk to the community. Well, here at the university, we have a built-in community, a built-in community of young minds that are ready, that are geared up with their genes and aspirations to be the next leaders of our society. And we have with us a young man that I admire so much who has come here all the way from my home state of Louisiana, down in the boot, that came all the way up here to Virginia that's doing the thing. And none other than our new SGA president and newly announced 2024 White House HBCU scholar, Zakari Prince Jackson. Mr. Jackson, welcome to State Water. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, to everyone out there, I hope all is going well, and we're glad to have you guys. Um, I want to thank you all for having me on the show and able to you know, communicate to you all and give you everything that we have going on here at Nova State University from the student side and a community aspect. Absolutely. Well, listen, you ought to be a little tired because all last week, you know, you were part of the student leadership just about in every single event, welcoming our new freshmen here on campus. Over 1,300 students. We've got over 1,300 freshmen, over 300 transfer students, and that number's going up every day as well. Uh, But, you know, exciting time. You know, a few years ago, you were in their seat. (laughs) Yes, yes. So how was it being on the stage now speaking to this new crop of students that when you left high school, I guess they were freshmen now, and you became a freshman here, but now you're their leader, and they're the new freshman. How was it looking across the stage in the Wilder Center, across the auditorium, and, and them looking up to you? It was an amazing time. I want to do pay tribute to the people that paved the way for me, to come, that came before me, and that were able to give me the baton and say, run with it and give these students the necessary skills, the experience, and the necessary knowledge that they need coming into Nova State University. A lot of events took place, and yes, we are tired, <laughs> but we still have to get to work. But we had an amazing time, got to meet a lot of new incoming freshmen and able to get them facilitated with the necessary things that they need to start their year successfully. Now, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, you're, we both from the boot. Yes. You know, <laughs> what, what we call real down south. You know, people say, oh, Virginia's the south. No, we, uh, the south. we from the south, <laughs> the real south. You know, so coming from the south, uh, where we are, we've got great institutions, they're great HBCUs, Southern University, where I graduated, my alma mater two times over. Uh, of course, Gramlin State, you know, <laughs> you know, the, Grandma's there, you know, we, we give homage to Grandma, uh, has all, you know, and pay homage to Eddie Robinson and all the great, great Tigers that came out of Grandma. Uh, also Xavier University, Dillard University. Uh, but you came all the way up here, you know, you, I guess you follow me up here, you know, <laughs> you know to, uh, to the north, to, yes. to Virginia, uh, to attend the Spartan Nation. What brought you this way? 
Uh, I would say um, a need for change. Um, I was down there. I was able to see different things, but I wanted to get out and start something new. And I'm glad I did that because taking that leap of faith, having that community behind me, instilling inside me, I was able to do so and come here and start new things for my own life, but able to see all the different things that Norfolk State has to offer and was able to pour back into me. And now I am doing phenomenal things and able to pay back to the students that are coming behind me so that they can do phenomenal things as well. You know, I've, you know, I, as a professor, I notice, you know, students and, and it's something about leaders. Leaders have that, that, uh, you know, that thing. <laughs> you really can't describe it when it's that thing. And you were definitely one of those young men that, that had that thing, you know. Um, so I knew that you were going to be the leader that you are. You just had it. But it's, it's something about this, this institution that helps to shape and mold it. You know, our motto is that we see the future in you. you yes and, and of course you know we definitely see the future that you're going to have and your future is bright speaking of your future so you come from the boot from Natchitoches Louisiana not too far from where I'm from in Shreveport we're about what 50 miles 60 miles right you know that down I-49 um, and we go from there um, and you're here in Norfolk State and you're you become SGA president but now the announcement hit it dropped about two weeks ago, I think. Yes, sir. That you are one of two at Norfolk State, um, 2024 HBCU White House Scholar. <laughs> First of all, congratulations to you. Thank you, thank uh, you. That is a huge, huge, huge honor. You know, again, only two people selected, you know, every year uh, from our institution and not just our institution, but uh, across the country, all uh, thousands of students apply, but you were one of two. Tell me about that experience experience when you got the word. How how did you feel? It was phenomenal to know that um, I was selected. I want to thank not only um, the university administration, but I want to thank our seventh president of Nova State University, Dr. Uh, Javon Adam Gaston, for giving me the opportunity for even endorsing me to do so. And I want to pay tribute to the other student, um, Erica Cummings, for also being selected. Uh, She is a upcoming junior who is uh, selected on the cohort, along with 111 other cohort students from all HBCUs across the country. It was a phenomenal time um, to know that I was selected. The experience is going to go up from now because we have so many great things planned. We have the National HBCU Week Conference coming up yes. that we are all excited for that will be held in uh, Philadelphia that will take place, and we are excited for that. Absolutely. So, again, you've you got a great year ahead of you. 2024, 2025 is going to be a phenomenal academic year for you and all the involvement. Again, hats off. But not just then. You know, well, it was also a great election year as well. You know, we were talking earlier about um, – the election and the president run for president. And, and I, and I mentioned how, you know, this is, this excitement is very similar to Obama, former president Obama. And you were probably what, 12 years old when he was reelected in, in, in 2012, you know, and I I will show you pictures of of my two sons when Mm -hmm. we were, when he received his, when he was being inaugurated. Right. And we were sitting on the floor watching. I said, boys, you got to watch this. <laughs> you know, you got to watch this. You know, they weren't alive at the time where he was first elected. But mm-hmm. now watching it now, they see it. And, uh, of course, they're they're older, so they're voting now. So, but, and then also going in the booth to vote with me. Tell me about, you know, being 12 years old and seeing President Barack Obama. Man, that was a um, phenomenal time to know that it was someone that looks like me able to pour back not only into his community, but the world to take on that large stage of fulfilling something that no one has ever done in over the 200 plus years that this country has been here. But I saw myself in that moment. Um, I know the name they give me around campus as president is Obama. Huh? That's Obama really? walking right there. <laughs> so um, to know that people see me as that, um, it's because of someone that came before me and was able to represent themselves in their own community mm-hmm. in a phenomenal way. And I am so grateful that I was alive to see that happen. Wow. And I can say now that I am looking forward to the upcoming election held in November of this year. So, you know, tell the story about 
actually see an inauguration, you know, <laughs> that, that morning. Tell us yes, what it's about that um, I come from a family of 10. Um, it's nine boys and one girl. And I know that. Um, come on now. That's a whole basketball yes, football team. <laughs> yes, it is. And I remember <laughs> waking up early. None of them was up. I saw all of them sleep. And I told myself to wake up early just to watch him give his inaugural speech. And I was so excited, but it was a so surreal moment because I was the only one doing it. And at that time, I realized I can become something greater just as he was. Absolutely. You know, uh, of course, we have big families back home. I'm the yes, middle of seven. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and with that, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, that, it's always that one, you know, that kind of stands out. And you're definitely that one that stands out here at Norfolk State. So when we talk about the the you, Mr. Obama here mm-hmm. on campus, you got to have you know you, you ran on a platform, and we're, this is the community show, community initiative, you know. So tell us about your agenda, what you plan to do in the twelve months that you are now at the helm of leading this group, this NSU student community. Um, there's so many things that we want to accomplish um, because I know it's it's my agenda, but it's many other people that's on my team that are helping me fulfill that agenda. So I would definitely want to um, give and pay back tribute to them. But we are looking to do so many things, and a couple of those things are making sure that we be transparent to the students, mm-hmm. getting them to understand that Nova State has so many things to offer, but whatever they're offering is given to them in a timely fashion and in a way that is respectable and understanding to the students. Mm-hmm. Um, also, getting our students to understand that there is many things outside of the walls of Nova State that Nova State has to offer. Nova State is not just some community on 700 Park Ave. It's a community around the world, and they're willing to offer so many different things in so many That's different right. ways. And so I want the students to understand these things and also get the administration to understand the difference in the aspect and the ways that our students are becoming. After COVID-19, everyone has experienced that. Oh, we absolutely. have become a different cohort of students, and if we don't to become understanding of those students and the ways we act and our personalities and the way that students are incoming into the university, we will then start to lose what our students are looking for. And that's why it's important that Student Government Association exists, not just here in Norfolk State, but we are listened to through all the presidents that we have at all HBCUs because it is critical. You know, you mentioned paying homage to those behind you. And it's very important. You know, I always talk about paying it forward, paying it back, and learning from others. Talk to me, talk to us a little bit about the past presidents or those that you've learned from that's helped to get you to where you are now. I would definitely say um, the president, a president that came three years before me is uh, Jalen Dury. Um, he is a great, phenomenal person that's working Absolutely. in a community that I'm very um happy to be looking up to and he recently uh, just a couple weeks ago we had our student leadership training um, for the student leaders at Nova State University and he came and spoke to us and the things that he poured into us about voting the importance of it and not even just voting learning your um, individuals in the community and also serving as president at Nova State University pouring those information into me and also my team, it gave me a sense of hope and a sense of um, leadership that I can still go out and lead and be in the ability that he has done already for us. Taking that platform and taking the playbook that he has already written, I'm able to pick up the baton and run with it. You know, it's I remember Jalen, and again, very similar to yourself, he was really engaged, yes. hit the ground running. <laughs> yes. Even as a freshman. Just, yes. just like yes, yourself. He was. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, this guy, Junior, you know, being an SGA president, you know, just running with it. Um, and of course he represented the university very well um in in the state uh, as a student representative uh for our state council of higher education as well as chef. And he was one when you talked about voting. You know, he had this vision, I want NSU to mm-hmm. have a voting precinct here. Yes. And we're still running with that. Is that, that one is of the initiatives going. that you're yes. still going? I mean, you're p- picking up that baton, and, and we're going to have a voting precinct here next next year, definitely. Knock on wood and get it done. <laughs> it's definitely going to happen. But, again, it's, it's, it's something, it's about vision. And it's, it, it's interesting how you and I, we talk about how sometimes – you know, when you're young, you talk about, oh, I want this to happen. But then all of a sudden, as older uh, individuals, we're like, well, that's not how the world works. But, you know, he talked about having voting precinct as a freshman. 
and now he's graduated. He's in grad school doing great things, but you're here now as a senior, and that's coming to pass. It's very similar in the real world as we look at policy and politics. I mentioned earlier about how when we look at the progressives of the Democratic wing of the party, you know, those ideas came from a guy named Bernie Sanders who was out there talking about Medicare for all, you know, and, and, and everyone's like, no, that can't happen. COVID hits, and guess what? CARES Act, everybody got me. Yes. Medicare for all. You know, affordable health, uh, the, the Obamacare, uh, you know, Affordable Care Act. And all these things start to trickle down because the time necessitates that these things actually happen. When we take a look at politics today, when we take a look at policies that are coming down the pipe, what are some of the things that you as students, student leaders are hearing from your peers that's saying this needs to be addressed by us? I would say there's many different things, and some things can be worked out um, very quickly, and some things take time. And I feel that as my position as the SGA president, it's my ability and my duty to ensure the students of when those things are supposed to take place mm -hmm. and how they're supposed to take place as well, that transparency uh, portion that they're um, you know, so supportive of. And some things that the students are looking for is just a listening ear. Um, if we as the administration of the university are able to just listen to the students and just take the time out and able to ensure them that these things are happening in some capacity, the ease will be okay. And I want also the administration to understand that the students also look for something to take place. We know that it takes time, but reassure us that those things are taking place because they are saying, as students, we are the ones who are going here. We love the university. I want that to be understood. We love Norfolk State University, but the students want to ensure that the university loves us students that are currently going here and understanding that we expect certain things to take place in a way of transparency and the ability to ensure us that it is a fair stay and understanding why we're here. It's Stay of the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville, and you're listening to our series of Community Impact. And we have with us none other than the SGA president and newly announced 2024 White House HBCU scholar, Zakari Prince Jackson, who's here talking with us about not just his experience while at NSU, but his agenda for the students and outside and being engaged in the election and ensuring that their voice is heard. You know, Zakari, we, we talked about making sure that individuals are involved in the process, voting earlier. You know, l let's shift for, for just a moment. You know, we have an election that are, that's taking place now. Uh, of course, top of the ticket is the president, so everybody's really excited about it. And this year, they're really excited because who's at the top of the ticket. But we also have other down-ballot elections. We have a U.S. senator. Uh, that is also uh, being up for election here. And we actually have the debate, uh, one of the debates, which will be here in Norfolk State October 2nd. And we also have other offices where we look at city council, mayor's races. Our U.S. Congressman Bobby Scott is up for re-election. And then others as well on the local level. As a student, tell us about how you plan to get the local students engaged in being involved civically you know, making sure that their voices are heard, but also being a part of the process. I'm glad you asked that question because I was just in a meeting with our vice president of student affairs and many other members of his cabinet and to ensure that the students are aware of the upcoming election and the things that we are supposed to do as our civic engagement right. to our community. But what we wanted to ensure, which I pointed out, is that it's not just the uh, president of the United States that's okay. on that ticket. There are people that are um, running for seats of the House of Representatives and the Senate seats and other things that are done in the local community that needs to be seen as well. And so I took it upon myself to re create something called SET. It's called the Spartan Election Task Force. And that task force is composed of many different students' organizations that are nonpartisan on campus to ensure that all the students are, voices are being heard, but their understanding of the information that's being presented to them, but also accurate information. Mm. Because at our disposal, there are 
the social media and yeah. on the social media the um the false information people run with it and if you don't know better you're not going to do better and um we want as many students involved in the election we really really do but if we give them false information and we do not do anything until november comes yeah. those students will vote wrong and i want them to understand it's we're not telling you where to vote but you will be voting wrong which means your voice won't be heard wow and Unfortunately, your vote might not count in the way you want it to count. You know, it's interesting you mentioned, you know, misinformation, false information. What role does social media play for your generation as it relates to this election? Oh, it plays a large role. <laughs> it plays a huge, huge role because whatever we see on there, we run with it. The information that the students t see within the few seconds, that information is repost. When a friend sees that information being reposted, they repost it. That false information then spread 10 times more than when it was posted wow. in the seconds that it was uh, put online. So do you, are, are your peers looking at the um, news station? Are they reading the Associated Press? Where are they getting this information from? Only from local sources, well, large sources that we see as amusing to us. TikTok, Instagram. Uh. X, as also known as Twitter, yeah. that those are the main sites. If we put students in the aspect of um, getting the information from television news or newspaper or the outlets, they're not going to look at those occasionally as they should wow. for the accurate information. Like wow. somebody I know that I really like is the Washington Post. I, I, I like um, reading them, but a lot of students are not going to do so. Right. So, so they're going to get it from what you're getting it from, TikTok. Right. <laughs> so TikTok is not only entertaining, but it's also educating mm -hmm. or miseducating. Yes. So, you know, if, would that be the case? What are, what are some of the issues that we as, as adults need to know that are facing African-American students and young people in your generation? I would say making us feel... Our, our generation is a tough generation. We're coming in with a lot of different things. The needles are hitting us in the haystack. And I want the community, especially the African-American community, to know that we are still learning. Wow. And we ask that you pour the knowledge into us in a way that is comfortable, in a way that is attainable, and also and respectable. Our community is hard. <laughs> it's a hard community. And some students grow in different ways of learning. Why would you say it's hard? I would say it's hard in a way that it's different now. Mm. And I'm able to say that I we grew up in a different way, but yeah. as I came to college, these are my peers. These are my particular African American community in the Absolutely. sage in the same um age group mm -hmm. and we are different than when we were growing up. And I see that on a discipline side. I see that on the education side. And I just see that on the social side, too. We don't socialize like we used to. We use social media to socialize. Yeah. And it becomes who we are. And if we have our elders not pouring into us, like my Madea, that's what we call my yeah. great-grandmother. Savior. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we don't have them pouring into us like that, then we lose touch of our community, making it even much harder. You know, when you mentioned that, also, your generation is a COVID generation. Yes, it is. You know, I, I think this, so some of, some, it may be this class or the one before you, they didn't have a high school graduation, and I think the college graduation was the first graduation. You know, so, and then dealing with that and then dealing with trauma in a different way. You know, you're dealing with it electronically. So, ele you know, it, it's amazing how social media, the phones play a major role in your lives. I remember during the time of Obama's uh, first run, uh, well, his, yeah, his first run in an election and then his reelection, you know, he started using social media. You know, John McCain was not a social media guy. <laughs> and he literally ran away with the youth vote, you know, because of that. You know, so we see how important, you know, this phone, you know, the electronic communication is, which also brings up AI, artificial intelligence. Yes. You know, how is your generation being influenced by AI, especially as it relates to political and policy issues? With artificial intelligence, it can go wrong, mm -hmm. but it can be used in a positive way. And I know sometimes people have their biases on which side it yeah. should lean towards. It can be used both for both. 
it can be used in a negative way to target, especially the African American community, especially HBCU students yeah. who are unknowledgeable of the certain things that are going on behind mm -hmm. the closed doors with artificial intelligence because that is not something that we are used to seeing. And then it can be used in a positive aspect to get us to understand what is familiar to us in a way that we're knowledgeable of while using social media. So it has both you know, bad and good, but it's all about how it's being used. And that's why we need those advocates behind those closed doors when they see something of artificial intelligence being used in a negative way to take it down, to get rid of it, and inform us of the artificial intelligence that has been used in a positive way <laughs> because it is positive. And yeah. we're smart and we're HBCU and we're going to ensure that the knowledge that we're being poured in Absolutely. by our HBCU community, our HBCU faculty and staff and professors, they are able to give us that knowledge because they are teaching us about artificial intelligence yeah. at Nova State University. So we're knowledgeable of it. We're very smart. But there are some that are coming in that has no knowledge about it yeah. and might see that the negative is the positive, which is not true. Yeah. So let's talk about the elephant in the room here, voting. And again, we say it all the time. This is the most important election of our generation. But even now, when we look at us coming out of COVID, the economy getting back on its feet, the world itself not really recouping the way the United States recoup. And then, of course, going, uh, we, we also dealt with uh, eight years, four years of a president, a lot of instability, a lot of uncertainty, four years of trying to get out of that instability. And now we have an opportunity to choose a leader. The world's looking at us, but also our community is being engaged. What would you say to your demographic? Because we get this a lot. You need to vote. You need to register to vote. But they say, hey, I don't vote. Why is it important for me to vote? It's very important for us to vote with my demographic because this matters. It might have I know a lot of people love the uh, presidential election of Barack Obama and many other elections that occur before or after such. But this one to us is very, very personable because after COVID, it has come of a social in educational aspect of the mm. students, not even just the students, everyone as a community, the way we act, the way we talk, the way we see each other as individuals and as human beings. Mm. However the president comes in this time will be critical to how the future is for all of us. Wow. And our generation will be the determination of that. I know as I have been on Zoom calls and um, calls about an election with yeah. the Kamala Harris campaign, so many people have been telling us that it is on our backs that this election will carry if we do the right thing. And not saying not saying who we will vote for. I'm just right. saying that these are the things that we've been involved in. Right. And it's been critical that someone is pouring back into us and telling us at least the importance of why it's important for us to vote right. as students and as individuals of this demographic and generation. Absolutely. The most important election of your generation. Yes hands down so in our last few moments here again this has been a great conversation <laughs> you know we, we could talk for hours but a, as we as we end now let our audience know and, and your 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 students your peers you know what's that one golden nugget that you would leave them that you've picked up so far from the spartan nation oh nova state has so many golden <laughs> nuggets but i would definitely say get involved Get involved in the ways that you see will change lives, even your life, but also don't do it for self. Mm. Do it to help the next person because there is a God out there and he will pay yeah. back to you in the ways that you are helping because you are doing a good deed. Inform others of the right things to do. Keep consistency in the things that you're looking to do. Be inspirational, be enthusiastic, but also have the love in your heart to make sure that you are paying tribute and paying back to what has been given to you because what you do matters. Absolutely. And you are truly an example of getting involved and giving back and making a difference. That is none other than our student leader, our SGA president, and newly minted 2024 HBCU White House scholar, Zakari Prince Jackson, all the way from Natchitoches, Louisiana, the boot up here in, in the Spartan. Listen, so glad to have you. Uh, you. So proud of you, of you, young man. Continue doing what you're doing, and uh, many are watching you. But continue doing what you're doing. Doing a great job representing the Spartan Nation. Well, well, once again, 
We thank you for listening to us, as you always do on this Sunday. Continue to be good, be great, God bless, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Carrie Washington, and you're listening to State of the Water with award-winning host, Dr. Eric Claville.